Hello and welcome to this presentation titled An Overview of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. This is another in the 10-minute tip series of programs for credit and collection professionals. My name is Michael Dennis. I'll be your presenter today. Let's begin with an introduction. The ECOA is a federal law. The ECOA prohibits credit grantors from discriminating on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin, gender, marital status, or age. The ECOA requires creditor companies to comply with certain notification and record keeping requirements. Specifically, the credit grantor must provide notice to an applicant of negative action taken with respect to a credit application received and the credit grantor must do so within 30 days after a completed application has been received. Following that notification, the applicant company has 60 days from receipt of notice of an adverse action to request an explanation of the creditor's adverse decision. ECOA requirements. The creditor company needs to provide or must provide a statement of the reasons for the decision to decline a request for credit and as I mentioned in the previous slide must do so within 30 days. The creditor must retain records about applicants that have been denied credit. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act applies even if an applicant receives a lower credit limit than the credit limit it had requested on the application and the ECOA applies if the credit grantor offered shorter payment terms or different payment terms than were requested by the applicant company. Basically, under the ECOA, the applicant has the right to know why their credit application was denied and has the right to know why the credit approved was less than the amount that they requested. Please note, the purpose of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, this federal law, is to prevent discrimination in the granting of credit. In other words, the goal is to make credit equally available to all creditworthy applicant companies. And it is believed that the requirements of the ECOA, as described above, make this purpose more likely to be accomplished. So the intent or goals of the ECOA include informing applicants of the rights that they have with respect to adverse decisions made by creditors. Another goal or intent is to compel compliance by creditors through enforcement action. Number three is to punish creditors that violate the ECOA protections and provisions. It also creates this law a mechanism for compensating injured credit applicants. Contrary to popular misconception, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act does not create a legal right on the part of any applicant company to be granted credit. That's not what it's about. It's not a provision that says you must grant credit uh, to any company for any reason. What it says instead, or what it addresses instead, is a mechanism that creates a legal right to fair and equal access to credit. How does the ECOA apply to you? How does it apply to your company? Well, under the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, a creditor is any person or party that regularly extends, renews, or continues to extend credit to companies. In this scenario, the person described in the first sentence can be a person, a corporation, a partnership, a trust, an estate, a cooperative, an association, or a government entity. And in all likelihood, you're one of those if you're granting credit to customers. An applicant is any person, the applicant company, the applicant entity is a person, a corporation, a partnership, a trust, an estate, a cooperative, an association, or a government agency that applies to a creditor for the extension of credit. So this, this concept, this defines who your customers are. The previous uh, section described who is covered by the ECOA, and therefore the argument is pretty clear that that creditor companies are covered by the ECOA. Prohibitions. You as a creditor may not do the following. You may not discriminate on the basis of sex, marital status, race, national origin, religion, or age. Nor is a company permitted to discourage applicants for credit 
on the basis of rage, age, sex, marital status, etc. In addition, the ECOA says you cannot, or you are prohibited, I should say, from imposing different terms and conditions based solely on things like sex, marital status, national origin, or race. In addition, you as a creditor are prohibited from asking an applicant whether the company is woman-owned, minority-owned, or is in fact a small business entity. In addition, there are rules you should be aware of, and these can take the form of prohibition. So you can act, you may not act, I should say, in violation of state laws that are more restrictive than the ECOA, because it's certainly possible for a one of the 50 states to have a state law that is even more restrictive uh, as it relates to the creditor, debtor, or creditor applicant relationships than the ECOA. So what happens is this, if the state statute is less restrictive, the creditor must obey the federal law, the ECOA. If the federal ECOA is less restrictive, then the creditor must obey the applicable state law when dealing with a customer in that state. Explanation of adverse decisions. As a consultant, one of the things that I've seen is people sometimes struggle with how to describe or explain the actions being taken when those actions are adverse. So for example, an adverse decision would be not to extend credit to an applicant. Another adverse decision, another example would be the applicant company requested a $10,000 credit limit and your decision was to approve only a $5,000 credit limit. So then the question becomes, okay, we've made an adverse decision. How, what type of explanation are we required to provide when the applicant company says, why did this happen? And so here are a few examples of what would be adequate explanations by a creditor of an adverse decision with respect to an applicant. So the first one says, your company, meaning the applicant company, does not meet our current credit granting criteria. Number two, we are unable to gather enough information about your company to justify open account terms. Number three, your company has insufficient credit history or insufficient business experience to justify the credit limit you've requested. Number four, we found adverse information about your company during our credit review process. Number five, your financial condition does not justify the credit limit and or the payment terms that you've requested. Now, some of you might be thinking, this isn't a very detailed explanation. I'm not positive that this applicant company that was, was denied open account terms is going to be happy if the only explanation they get is this, your company does not meet our credit granting criteria. My response to that may seem a little bit flippant, but here it is, that's too bad. It's not our obligation to provide a detailed lengthy multi-page explanation of the process and the, and the decision-making criteria that we used when we determined that the applicant did not qualify for open account terms. We are, as an example, not required to say, well, we looked at your credit report and it contained this information, or we contacted your trade references and they told us this or we called your bank loan officer and he said that about your relationship with that bank. That is not an affirmative obligation we have, and I would argue that that would be unethical for us to do any of the things I just described. So you may think of these things as, as vague. Your company doesn't meet our credit granting criteria. Uh, and perhaps you want to add a little bit more flavor to that. The reason I'm using these very brief examples is I want you to give serious consideration to keeping your explanations brief so that you don't uh, reveal confidential information uh, or provide too much detail in the context of explaining an adverse decision, which again is a requirement, a notification requirement, uh, and a response requirement under the ECOA. In summary, the Federal Equal Credit Opportunity Act was passed into law in response to bad behavior on the part of creditor companies. In other words, it was passed in response to discrimination by creditors on the basis of things like marital status or race or national origin.
Please remember that the ECOA does not guarantee an applicant company will be granted open account credit terms. It does not guarantee open account. It does not guarantee that the applicant will be given the payment terms that they expect or the credit limit that they desire. However, applicant companies applying for credit are protected by the, by the ECOA. The good news from our perspective is that the ECOA does not describe specifically how credit decisions should be made. So all of the judgment and discretion and experience and expertise that goes into the process today can continue to go into the process. Equally important, the ECOA does not describe how adverse decisions will be described if an applicant company requires an explanation of that adverse decision. I want to thank you for your time and attention today. By the way, if you're interested in hearing the entire one-hour presentation on this topic, please contact the Sponsoring Credit Association for more information. Take care.